This is the story of a human being. A human being who was assigned male at birth, but never had their chromosomes tested. She's been known by a few names in her lifetime, but for the present moment, we'll call them Quinn. Here's a photo of Quinn when they were nine years and seven months old, and Quinn loved their face and their body. Well, apart from her teeth. But she was British by descent. But thanks to the influence of testosterone, her face began to turn into something that she hadn't wanted at all. And it happened so slowly she didn't even realise until she was an adult and thrust into the role of man. And while she excelled in this role, becoming a prominent alpha male figurehead, she came to realise that something wasn't quite right. Luckily, thanks to the wonderful world of modern medicine, it was not too late to rewind the clocks and reclaim what was stolen. I mean, first things first, can we give a little round of applause to my friend Rebecca for that gorgeous voiceover. I'm back with another video. Wow, how crazy, how cool, how fun. Uh, don't get too excited. I thought today I would talk about my experience of getting facial feminization surgery. If you're new here, my name is Quinn Burkles. I am a trans femme non-binary individual and I have been medically transitioning for just over a year now, which is crazy. Um, I celebrated my one year anniversary a couple weeks ago, which was exciting and fun. And um, very recently I had the opportunity to get facial feminization surgery which is something that I wasn't expecting to be a part of my journey for um, quite a lot longer, but I had just a very spontaneous booking open up. People were incredibly generous in donating to my transition fund and everything fell into place and boom bada bang, I was shaving some bones off my face. How very punk and metal of me. <laughs> I was really not expecting to get the donations that I got, and there is no way I can give a deserving thank you in a generic space on YouTube. Like, the, the level of thank you that that deserves would is so much bigger than what I am doing in this video, but I still wanted to just take this little space and say thank you. It means so much to me. Um, the only reason I'm making this video, the only reason I've been able to have this gender affirming procedure is because of you. And I just cannot even begin to say how much it has changed my life in such a short period of time. Um, and I will try to articulate that in a second, but holy fuck, it's been so transformative. And um, I'm just really grateful that I was able to access it so soon in my transition. Seriously, I want to take some of you guys out for like coffees and just like cry. I don't know. <laughs> just like, I'm just... Yes. Anyway, I'd, it's kind of frustrating because like all of these people, many of whom I don't even know, many of whom I do know, have just like completely changed my life and I just feel like I have not been able to adequately um, repay people and say thank you for something so massive and, and huge. Anyway, um, let's get into the video. First things first, I am a little over a month into my recovery. In terms of a facial feminization recovery, that's still quite early. The bulk of recovery is three months and the full, 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 full recovery can take a year or longer. So I am still in recovery, um, but a lot of the most significant aspects of my recovery are over now, enough to where I feel comfortable making this video. But yeah, obviously I'm still in recovery. So the process of healing from surgery is still happening. I can't fully speak to my complete holistic experience because it is ongoing. In terms of what I had done, um, with facial feminization surgery, it's such a broad thing if you're not very familiar with what facial feminization surgery is. Under the FFS umbrella, there are many different procedures. FFS procedures can be more maximist, maximalist, or minimalist. I went from more of a minimalist approach with my own personal FFS journey. Um, there are people who get um, chin reductions and shaves, jaw shaves and reductions, lip lifts are quite common in FFS, orbital rim shaving around the eyes is very common, um, forehead reconstruction is kind of considered the main thing or one of the main aspects of a facial feminization procedure, and um, many people go get rhinoplasties, hairline recontouring and lowering and all of this stuff. Um, so I'm only speaking about my own experience with facial feminization surgery. I've been contemplating facial feminization surgery basically as soon as I began to transition. So I have been out and I have been on hormone replacement therapy for over a year now, which is 
crazy and really exciting. Basically, my journey is that I realized I was trans. I realized my puberty had sort of already happened. And when I realized what had already happened to me as a result of my puberty, I was like, oh no! Like, I remember, for example, for um, a few years into adulthood, um, my eyes became a little bit more like closed off, which is a common, which is considered a male feature. Um, men often have smaller eyes that are more clouded or hidden by bone. So oftentimes men will kind of grow bone around their forehead and around their eyes, which makes their eyes look more hidden. And I remember when this started to happen to me, and I remember just putting moisturizer all over my eyelids because I was like, trying to undo it. I was like, oh, I must just be getting older. Maybe I'm just like aging really young. But it was actually a process of puberty and I just wasn't even aware of it. And the moisturizer wasn't going to do anything because it was actually an effect of bone. And so at the start of this year, I did some consultations for facial feminization surgery. I kind of was just asking um, mainstream facial feminization places like, how would you make my face more feminine? And I would often specify that I wanted something more androgynous, more non-binary, because I do feel very androgynous. But at the time, I was very very nervous and anxious about being trans and I was more than anything just kind of wanting to move very slow whereas now I'm very comfortable with being a girl with being a woman and being extremely feminine is something that is all just amazing for me so what I want now out of my gender and my expression is much more stereotypically aligned with womanhood but I do still feel very androgynous and um and anyway so at the time I was looking for something a little bit more subtle a little bit more androgynous um and I got some very interesting consultation results, which honestly I was like terrified by. Um, just because they they Photoshop your face to give um, you this kind of like vague idea of what your face could potentially look like. Um, and it's obviously not you. It's obviously not your face because it's Photoshopped. You're not going to look, if you ever get an FFS consultation or any kind of plastic surgery consultation for like, here's a possible result. Just bear in mind, you're not gonna look like that. There's literally no way you're gonna look like that. Um, and I think just seeing my face warped in Photoshop was just like kind of freaked me out. It's really interesting to me looking at the consultation images I had compared to the actual results I got. Um, this one in particular, I was like, I do not wanna look like this. This one like freaked me out. I was like, oh my God, absolutely not. Um, and that was one of the reasons I did not end up going with that particular clinic. But um, I did end up going with um, Two Pass Clinic, and they are the ones who gave me this um, simulation. I ended up going with a different surgeon than the one who gave me this simulation, because unfortunately he actually passed away. Super random. Long story. Um, but anyway, I went to Two Pass Clinic um, in Belgium. I spent so much of last year just like debating whether surgery was right for me, whether I definitely wanted facial feminization surgery. There were huge parts of me that were opposed to it. I was firstly extremely scared of getting surgery on this enormously intense level of, of fear. I was convinced I was going to die. Genuinely, I wish I was being dramatic, but I'm not even kidding. Everybody in my life will tell you that I had said goodbye to them and written like dramatic messages. And I wrote this whole like, just in case I die, um, like letter, which nobody has ever read. I also wasn't sure I wanted it for ideological reasons. There are so many aspects of my philosophy in life that is like, just be who you are naturally. Don't change yourself. And firstly, I made a whole video about why I think ethically and philosophically it is completely valid to seek out cosmetic surgery if that's something you want for yourself. But I've, I've had so much, like, like with I think most people, there's been a lot of societal shame put on me with the concept of cosmetic surgery. Um, and and I've also just had an enormous amount of shame put on me for this surgery from people close to me which, and people online, which I want to get into in a second. There was also a side of me that was like, I want to challenge what it is to be feminine and I want to challenge what it is to look like a woman and I want to challenge, you know, transphobia and I want to be visible and show up um, as a trans person in society. And there was that side of me as well that was like, I can be a girl with a massive eyebrow ridge and I can be a girl with a more masculinely shaped nose. And so there was a large part of me that also really wanted to challenge these things. And to do that, I felt like I had to not get this surgery. Like I could only challenge those things if I didn't get this surgery. Um, and in the end, obviously I decided that I wanted the surgery, that it was really important to me. It was worth it to me. It was worth the risks and all of these things. Now, despite that, now, despite 
rigorously challenging whether or not I wanted it, despite spending an entire year debating whether or not it was right for me, despite doing insane amounts of research, despite starting a GoFundMe and making financial plans and making enormous personal sacrifices, people made it really fucking difficult for me. So in part three of this video, I'm gonna go into the actual recovery process. I'm gonna go show photos of me in recovery. I'm gonna show before and after photos and talk about where I'm at now and my thoughts and reflections. Um, but right now, in this moment in time, I need to address some of the negativity that I received around this surgery, some of the pushback, some of the insanity, some of the comments that I got, um, because I think that this needs to be addressed. Um, so let's get into it. So anyway, people had some stuff to say about me getting surgery. So uh, don't be shy now. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I'm ready to chat. Okay, so um, first things first, I'm going to respond to some comments on my last video talking about my desire for surgery. Um, we have the lovely user O-OT3RW2DX9I says, OMG, you just care about yourself. This is the issue with this movement. It is full of narcissistic people. And then in a follow-up reply, they say, do whatever you want with your body. We had... PK, the one and only, the one and only, wow. I am honored to be responding to your comment, PK, the one and only. Know this, I'm saying this, I support trans. And if you get this surgery, it's not easy to turn back and they can make you infertile. Wow, I can't believe that shaving bone off my forehead makes me infertile. Thank you so much for that education on biology. Okay, so this is a very common theme with commentators on my video discussing my desire to get surgery, but also just in my life. I get this on dating apps, I get this from friends and family. Um, there's this assumption that when I, a trans person says that they're pursuing surgery, people just assume what that means. Um, so for example, if you are a trans woman, if you're trans feminine like myself, if you say that you are considering getting surgery, people think they're chopping their dick off. Firstly, not how that surgery works. You don't chop your dick off, you reformat it. Secondly, there are loads of surgeries that trans people pursue for gender affirming purposes. Um, I find it incredibly frustrating that people always assume what surgery that I'm getting. Um, I was always pursuing facial feminization surgery in my last video where I discuss um, non-binary surgery and medical transition. I was discussing facial feminization surgery, but know this, even if we never meet, I love you for who you are, just be yourself. The point of the equality of the genders is so we can just be ourselves. And fuck anything else, I'm a person who only accepts one label and that is mother. <laughs> There's only one gender, guys, and it is mother. So this is another thing, um, I, all the time, I get people saying, don't get surgery, just be yourself. Okay, so the surgery is making me feel so much happier and helping me be myself. Like, what? People are like, do whatever you want with your body, just be yourself, just don't get surgery. It's like, okay, so you don't want me to be myself. Got it, alrighty, just wanted to clarify that. James Cantor, James Cantor 0459 said, please do not have surgery. You did ask nicely, James, and you've been a longtime supporter of this channel. Um, so I will try to be respectful in my response to this, uh, to this request um, and um, simply say no. The entitlement of complete strangers to tell me what to do with my body is insane. It's categorically insane. I got the surgery. Guess what, James? I got the surgery and I'm really sure glad I did. <laughs> User dash GU3ZS9KX9U says gross dot I'm out dot. Okay, I don't really understand why you had to say gross to a very affirming process that I've gone through in my life, um, but I guess you felt the need to be rude and nasty for no reason. Kenneth Bowery says do not do it, you will regret it cannot trans just be happy, B 
being by and love everybody, take care. So, I mean, a lot to unpack here, grammatically speaking, but um, cannot trans just be happy being by and love everybody? So, again, there's all of these comments where people are like, just be yourself, love everybody, except I don't love you if you do this. It's just incredibly hypocritical and bizarre, and I just don't understand how people cannot really see that complete hypocrisy there. Um, do not do it, you will regret it. I didn't, didn't regret it. Really glad that I did it. I had a really positive experience. Is literally the best thing I've ever done for myself ever. Wish I had done it sooner. I'm so glad that it's done. Regret absolutely nothing about it at all. And it's made me a lot happier. So can you not just be happy? I'm sorry I couldn't just choose to be happy for you, Kenneth, but I'm a lot happier now that I've done this thing for myself. I'm sorry, I'm so resentful of these comments. Um, but I think I have every right to be. Anyway. And then I said how not to be supportive, and then they replied with, sorry, Quinn, not in self-mutilation. Just be the non-binary person you are without the bloodshed. <laughs> Lot to unpack here. Jesus, fuck. Um, the fact that gender-affirming procedures are compared to self-mutilation is insane. The fact that I can undergo a very safe, very healthy process of reversing my testosterone puberty, um, and that gets compared to self-mutilation is insane. Uh, the bloodshed part is true. There was a lot of bloodshed, which as a goth, I'm not, I don't actually, okay. I don't actually self-identify as a goth. I have enough labels already. As an alternative person with a love of the eccentric, I'm like into the blood part of things. I'm just like, ooh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. My hair was like literally dyed red from how full of blood it was. I should probably content warning that, but I thought it was really cool. DM me if you want photos of my blood <laughs> hair. Anyway, um, that's not appropriate for YouTube, Quinn. Um, yes. So, anyway, yeah, there is a lot of, there is some bloodshed. That's true. It's just, and just once again, just be yourself. Just be the non-binary person you are. I'm being it myself, Kenneth. This is me. Oh my god. Let me live. Okay, um, I debated about whether or not I want to share this last bit, but the very, the most significant place that I got pushed back from the surgery was from my family. I, I love most of my family very dearly. Um, I definitely do not wish if you happen to be watching this and you're a family member or you know who I'm talking about, I'm not making this in any desire to be negative, but this is part of my experience and I have a right to share it and it made my life very difficult. Um, so firstly, I had a family member try to bribe me to not get surgery. That was how badly they wanted me to not get surgery. They tried to bribe me out of it, uh, which was insane because the time that they tried to bribe me out of it was after I had already paid for the surgery. I had emails, long messages, and voice notes left trying to convince me to not get the surgery. And this was all happened pretty late in the process, like after the surgery was already booked and planned. And that was just really overwhelming because it's like, I've already made this decision. I'm already committed to going through what is, what is a difficult thing. Like getting surgery, I'm not here to make it seem like the most casual, easy thing ever. Like it is a big deal and it is difficult. And what you need more than anything else in the world is support and love. Anyway, I'm going to read a little bit of thing of a little bit of something that a family member sent to me. They said, I have looked at your Instagram and judging from that, it seems that you have a somewhat excessive interest in your appearance. Read me, read me to filth. <laughs> you are very attractive, thank you, the way you are, and I fail to see the need for you to go into some radical surgery to supposedly improve your appearance or make yourself more feminine. Um, firstly, I never said anything about approving my appearance as part of the surgery to anybody, so that was superimposed on my motivations to get the surgery. Never said that I was trying to be prettier. This was a gender-affirming procedure for me, so there are definitely aspects of that that are contained in the realm of wanting to be prettier. I definitely wanted to be prettier as a girl, but um, that was that's part of gender affirmation more than anything. And I had a few people say that I was attractive the way that I was um, to those people. OMG, thank you. Stop flirting with me. The whole you're already attractive argument kind of shows a lack of awareness and understanding in why trans people would like to seek out gender affirming procedures. There are loads of trans women I know, for instance, who were really hot as guys. Great. They, that didn't mean that they wanted to stay 
male. There's a societal obsession with being beautiful. And so I think that people boil down a lot of trans experiences to aesthetics and beauty oriented stuff, which is just totally willfully ignorant of what being trans is. I had many moments before I got facial feminization surgery where I did feel really beautiful. Um, and I had a lot of moments where I just was so unbelievably, indescribably miserable with how I looked. I would not have a conversation with somebody unless I was facing them and looking into their, their eyes directly. Um, I would not go on walks with people because I did not want them to see my profile. And yeah, I don't know. I find this really frustrating. Um, there, there are people I'm sure who find me less attractive now than I was before I transitioned. Great. Fine. Good for you. <laughs> There's almost this like incel level of entitlement to somebody else's like attractiveness. Like when trans women were attractive as men before they transitioned, you would get people who were like, what a shame, what a waste. You were so attractive. And, and I know that trans men get the same thing. Like straight men will be like, oh, what a waste. You were such a pretty girl. What a waste. You were such a beautiful man. It's not for you. We weren't going to date you anyway. Like there, it's, it wasn't about, it was never about you, obviously. Another thing that I was told in that exact same email was that I should stop wearing dresses and wearing um, makeup around my dad to like appease him because he's been really horrible and transphobic to me. And I was just like, are you serious? Um, so yeah, just lots of, lots of transphobic nonsense and extreme lack of support in the family department for me. Okay, friends, um, that was a lot. Uh, thank you for entertaining me ranting to you. This is not obviously holistic of the response I got to my surgery. I had a lot of positivity and a lot of support as well. And if you're like me and you had a family who was not very supportive and who weren't even just not supportive, but who were actively hostile in the process of me getting the surgery, um, you can push through it. I believe in you and literally slide into my DMs and we'll complain about our families together. It'll be great and super therapeutic. Okay, I know this video is long and also kind of a lot. Um, I want to briefly discuss the actual process of recovery. Um, so again, I went to Two Pass Clinic in Belgium. I had a really great experience there. That clinic is beautiful. They take such good care of you. Everyone is so nice and lovely. There are loads of other trans people getting surgery there as well. And everyone's just so nice and friendly. It was like a holiday resort. I talked a little bit about what I had done at the start of this video, but to go into more detail, I had a type three forehead reconstruction and a rhinoplasty. As part of that process, um, included an orbital rim shaving. So that's a reconstruction of the bone around my eyes, a reduction of my brow bone. I had a very intense brow bone, which most of you guys would have never seen because I rarely ever showed my profile on camera because it was dysphoric for me. But anyway, um, so I had a very, very intense brow bone. Um, and they also um, changed my hairline to be more feminine as well as part of that process. Um, so yeah, the, um, that's what was done. Um, the process of recovery was extremely painless for me. I mean, literally, like I did not have any pain. I took pain medication twice and that was like a week after the actual procedure. And it was mostly just because I had a headache. Um, so I didn't have any pain at all with the surgery, like just literally none, which I was surprised about. Um, everything about the process was very easy. I think the hardest part of recovery for me was that I had some mobility challenges the first week. Um, because my orbital rim had changed shape, the way that my eyes were like processing movement was slightly different. So I had to be very careful in, in how I moved my body. I couldn't move very quickly. I had to be careful when walking and just simple tasks like washing dishes was sometimes difficult for me um, because I just was a bit like, um, I, I don't really know how to describe it. Like I wasn't quite nauseous or dizzy, but I had trouble with mobility and with my eyesight in relation to mobility. Now, fun fact, I had no idea this would be the case, um, but I can actually see better. Um, I did not expect facial feminization to improve my vision. Um, my vision has definitely improved. It is absolutely not placebo. Um, I wear glasses normally in my life and my astigmatism is definitely less significant now. Um, I noticed that pretty much right away and especially once the mobility issues resolved after the first like week. Um, I was like, what the heck? I see better now. You can call me crazy and you cannot believe me, but my vision is better. And that was an exciting side effect of the process of surgery. 
Um, as well as having better vision, um, my face just feels more comfortable and lighter. Um, and to describe that more specifically, like, I used to have a lot of weight around my eyes and literal physical, like, skin. I had quite heavy skin bags <laughs> above my eyes. Um, and those aren't sitting on top of my eyes anymore. So it's literally physically less effort for me to open my eyes than it was before surgery. Like this process of blinking and opening my eyes is less effort. It used to literally physically be more effort for me to open my eyes. That was another thing that I was just totally not expecting to happen. I didn't even know that was a thing at all. In terms of um, like incisions, um, I had two very, very small incisions around my nose, which you can't really see. And then I have this very, very significant incision along my hairline, which you absolutely can see. I was going into the surgery, I was really anxious about the incision. I knew that it was going to be a visible scar and I was really worried about what other people would think or say. I was worried about judgment. As you can see right now, I don't even feel any need to hide it. I, Once the surgery had happened, I realized I didn't really care about the scar at all. If anything, I think it's kind of cool. It uh, makes it look like I've had a lobotomy. So anytime I do something stupid, I can just be like, oh, sorry, that was for my second lobotomy. And people so far have sometimes actually believed me, which is... I don't know if that's something I should be insulted by, but um, it's kind of fun. I have jokes that I can make and also scars are cool. I don't know, it, d it didn't bother me nearly as much as I thought it would, but it's very visible. It's more visible than I expected it to be for sure, but it doesn't actually bother me. I thought that I would maybe try to hide it with my hair more, but I lately I've been wearing my hair braided back pretty much every single day and you can see the scar completely and I literally could not care less, so. But yeah, that is part of recovery. Um, I'm currently in the stage of putting some cream on my scar to make it fade. And um, uh, that side of aftercare, like medicine, the stuff that you physically have to do is so minimal. It's just really, really easy. The main thing for me that is currently still not totally back to normal is that I still have a lot of numbness. Um, a lot of times feeling and sensation returns around three months and I'm only one month in, so that's totally normal. Um, but yeah, so like my hair, there's like, Sensation starting to come back a little bit around here, but yeah, a lot of this has no sensation. Like the forehead to the middle of my head has no sensation. That's really weird. Um, I like, if I get like bump my head, I can't feel it. Or if someone like, you know, caresses my hair or my head or gives me a little forehead kiss, I can't feel it. That is really weird. I don't love that. I'm looking forward to sensation coming back, but it's not a big deal. If I knew that sensation loss was permanent, I would have still probably had the procedure done and it's not, it's not permanent, it will come back. It's interesting to me because part two of this video only showed you a small glimpse of the negativity I received around this surgery. And the reality is, is that I booked this surgery a month in advance. I, like financially it was a big deal, but I had it done. Um, I recovered in two weeks. It has radically changed my life in so many ways. It has improved my health. I can see better. So my physical health has improved, um, but it's also improved my mental health. I'm so much happier with my body and within my skin. And I literally have been doing more things. Like I've been leaving the house more often. I've been socializing more often. I have been so much happier. I've been going on dates more often because I've been feeling more confident in myself. I've just been like living life with so much abundance. Whereas last year I had a hard time leaving the house, I had a hard time socializing. I didn't feel as confident in myself. So in, in a radically short period of time, my life has changed so much for the better. I cried and cried when I had recovered and when I'd seen my face and when I'd, I'd seen the results of what I'd done, I was just like so overwhelmed with joy. And it's crazy to me how I can do something that is the best thing I've ever done for myself that makes me so unbelievably happy and that has such a huge positive impact on my health, mentally, physically. Um, and to have people be so incredibly negative and horrible about that. Um, and there's this definitely slightly immature side of myself that's like, fuck you all. You all said I was going to regret it and you all said I was making a horrible mistake and I didn't regret it. And I love how I look. And I love who I get to be in this world as a result of the decisions that I made in spite of your horrible, inappropriate negativity. But I'm not immature, so you know. <laughs>
Okay, I want to finish by showing some photos of my face before testosterone puberty, after testosterone puberty, and post transition. I say post, my transition is very much still in progress, but basically post FFS, and I've been on hormones for a year, and that also has a lot to do with the feminine result of my face these days. It's very much not just surgery. Um, I was lucky enough that hormones did quite a lot for my face. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, you know what I mean. This is me before um, testosterone came around and like wreck it ralphed my body. <laughs> I feel like I should apologize for using such hostile language to refer to my testosterone puberty, but it's my body and it's my experience and that's how I want to describe it. This is me um, after testosterone puberty. Um, as you can see, my face changed a lot, which is a normal process of getting older. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, lots of changes, changes, lots of changes, um, in my face after testosterone puberty. And this is a photo of my current side profile after surgery. There's probably still a little bit of swelling here, um, but that's what my face looks like now. Um, as you can see, lots of differences between these three photos. So yeah, that's my face, um, before puberty, after puberty, and after second puberty. Um, and a lot of these changes here, again, um, happened just from HRT. So obviously the changes in bone structure came about as a result of um, surgery, but um, HRT did a lot for my face. Anyway, thank you for following along with my facial feminization surgery. It means a lot to me. I'm very excited to step back into the creative space this year now that I am so much more comfortable with myself. Although that said, um, I am working a lot more with my day job right now. If you do want to help me do more creative things, feel free to support me on Patreon because that helps me put more priority into this work. There are other non-financial ways that you can show support for my work, like liking this video, sharing it around, um, commenting down below. Also, let me know if you have any questions related to my facial feminization experience or any other aspect of my life or the trans experience or anything. Um, feel free to put those down below. And if you haven't already and you want to subscribe and join along to this community, it might look dead, but I promise it's not. I just don't upload as frequently as I used to. Um, a lot of that has been because of transition, but it's also been because I've been really busy and also just reevaluating my relationship with social media. I very much, it's important for me to have a vibrant offline life, um, but I am still making videos and I have quite a few more planned. So uh, you wouldn't want to miss out. And um, yeah, all right, that's all for now. A la prochaine, you beautiful, lovely souls. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.